Now let's look at a weak acid strong base titration. Some parts will look really similar, like determining the equivalence point will be exactly the same, and some parts are going to be a little different. I've purposely used the same volumes and concentrations so you can see when you get an identical answer and which answers change. So let's start with question A. What is the pH of the initial solution before the addition of NaOH? So this problem is a little more work because this is a weak acid. Since again, like in the previous strong acid example, you are working a problem where you haven't added any base. That means you don't have to worry about the titration stuff. This is just what is the pH of a weak acid that has a 0.2 molar concentration and has a particular pKa of 3.75. Think of it like a problem from last chapter. So as a reminder, in case you don't remember, if you want to know the pH of a weak acid, you're going to have to use an ice table. And so to use your ice table effectively, you're also going to you need to know the concentration of the acid you're working with, and you're going to need to know the Ka. This problem gave us a pKa, though. So let's start by converting that to a Ka. So that's part one. So pKa equals negative log of a Ka. So we'll plug in our 3.75. Then I'm going to move the negative to the other side. So I have negative 3.75 equals the log of Ka. Then as a reminder, to get rid of your log, you raise 10 to the power for both sides. So we'll have 10 to the negative 3.75 equals Ka. Because if you take 10 to the log of the Ka, as long as these are right next to each other, they cancel. So we now put this in our calculator, and we're going to get that our Ka is equal to 1.78 times 10 to the negative fourth. So this will help us when we do our ice table. So now let's set that up. We have our acid, formic acid. We're going to add it to water, which is a liquid. It will be in equilibrium with the conjugate base, which is where we lose a hydrogen off of it. And then because it's an acid, we're going to form HCO plus, which makes sense. The, the HCOOH, a formic acid, one of the hydrogens left it because it became HCO minus, so that hydrogen has to go somewhere, so it's going to go to the water molecule and make it HCO plus. So now, because we just have the acid, we don't have a base floating around as well, because it's just the acid, we're going to do this using an ice table. We don't, we don't have an addition yet, so we don't have to do a BAA like we did on the last one yet. So ice says this is going to have a concentration of 0 0.200 molar. We're not going to put anything for our water. We don't have any of this at the start yet, we're saying. And this is approximately zero. We're going to assume the H3O plus is negligible from the water. Now our change. Since we don't have any of the formate, acid, the formate conjugate base, we can't gain more formic acid. It's got to be the thing reacting. So we're going to lose some of it. So minus x. And these are both one-to-one -one reactions. So both of these will be plus x. Our equilibrium is going to be 0 0.200 minus x. This will be x, and this will be x. And I'm going to assume x is small. For this Ka, that's probably reasonable. You can check by afterwards. We notice that the Ka is to 10 to the negative fourth power. That's the place where it starts to get kind of borderline, and you can check afterwards. In this one, it does indeed show up. You do the problem assuming x is small, and it is at the end, and you can check that. So now we've got to put this all into our Ka which is equal to the concentration of the products divided by the concentration of the reactants with not including any liquids or solids, so we're not going to include the water. So we'll plug our numbers in. So we have x for the, the HCOO minus, x for the H3O plus. We multiply those together and get x squared. And then HCOOH is just 0 0.200. This is going to be equal to 1.78 times 10 to the negative fourth. Multiply both sides by 0.2, and I'll get that it's equal to 3.56 times 10 to the negative fifth. We then square root both, and we get x is 0 0.0060 molar. This x is our HCO plus. We don't have any plus or minus there. So I can go ahead and put that into my pH equation, because that's exactly the HCO plus. So pH equals the negative log of our HCO plus. So in this case, that's 0 0.0060. So our pH is going to equal 2.22. And that is our starting pH. As we add base, we should consistently get a higher pH. It should never go down by adding a base. So that's problem one. Now, let's clear this and get part two. What is the equivalence point volume? So I'm going to start by writing out my chemical equation. Our formic acid plus NaOH are going to react. and they're going to form water, 
and we're going to form some HCOO minus, and we're going to form some Na plus. You'll notice this is a one to one reaction when it's balanced. So now we need to know what the volume actually is. So we're going to start with our 0 0.0150 liter sample of formic acid. We use the molarity. We know that for every one liter of formic acid, we're going to generate 0 0.200 moles. We also know that for every mole of formic acid, you're going to get one mole of sodium hydroxide is needed. So if you calculate that, you're going to get 0 0.003 moles of NaOH. And yes, this is the same answer as we got on the previous problem, and that's because the equivalence point volume calculation is identical in the strong and weak case. Nothing changes for this one. So we'll go through and do the work again, but we'll show you you get the same answers. So we have 0 0.003 moles of our NaOH, and we, have, we also know we want to know the volume, not the moles. So for every 0.1 moles of NaOH, you're going to have a volume of one liter of NaOH. Let me include that up here. And so our moles will cancel, and we're left with just liters. And so this will give us 0 0.030 liters of our sodium hydroxide. That's our equivalence point volume. Nothing changed between the two calculations. Same style. Now, question three. What is the pH after adding five milliliters of NaOH? So this one will start off looking the same, but it, the final answer is going to be calculated a bit differently. So we have eight. We've got our acid. We're adding some base. And we're going to worry about how it turns into water because we're adding an acid and a base. The H plus and the OH minus are always going to react to give us water. And then we're going to have our, acid, our formate ion. I keep trying to say acetate because we do it so often, but I purposely tried to use something different so it would look different. And our sodium ion. So we're going to go with, what did we begin with? We began with 0 0.003 moles of this. No hydroxide, don't worry about the water, none of the ions. Now our addition, we're adding 0 0.0005 moles of sodium hydroxide. We're not adding anything else. So the change is going to be, we're going to react, we're going to lose 0 0.0005 moles on the reactant side. And we're going to gain that many on the product side. And in this case, the amount you gain on the product side matters, so it's good we've been keeping track of it in our previous problems. So now we're going to have 0 0.0025 moles of our acid. We're not going to have any base left. It's all gone. And then we'll have HCO minus some Na+. What's important is you will notice that form it, the formate ion looks like A-, minus, whereas our formic acid, that's our HA. So we have both acid molecules and their conjugate base present at the same time. This is always going to happen in your titrations of a weak acid and weak base when you're adding, but you haven't reached the equivalence point yet. You're always gonna have both present. And what that means is you have a buffer. That's why we actually call this region in this type of titration, the buffer region. That's because since you have some of both, they behave like a buffer. And if you remember, we can find the pH of a buffer using the henderson hasselbach equations. We're going to use that here. pH equals pKa plus log of the base over the acid. So we'll plug all our values in. We have a pKa of 3.75. And we have a log. We've got our moles of base. It's going to be 0 0.0005. And it's base because it's the one that's missing a hydrogen. It's got one fewer. And then our acid, we've got 0 0.0025. We plug all those in. We get a pH of 3.05, which is good. It went up as we added base, which is what we would expect to happen. Say it says through C. All of the one, this is why you have to know the equivalence point so well, because when you're before the equivalence point, this is how you're going to solve the problem. It's going to be a henderson hasselbach equation to find the pH because you have both the acid and the conjugate base. Now, let's look at the next question. What is the pH of the equivalence point? Unfortunately, unlike the strong case, this problem is not super fast. We now have a lot more work to do. So at the equivalence point, what we need to note is all HA becomes A minus. So since we had 0 0.003 moles of acid to start with, we now have 0 0.003 moles of A minus because every single acid molecule, by definition of being the equivalence point, turned into its conjugate base. If we'd started with a base, it all would have turned into the conjugate acid. Another important point about this is 
We know information at the pKa and the Ka from earlier in the problem, but we need a Kb now. This is because since you have all conjugate base, you now have a weak base present, but no acid. So we've got to solve this like a weak base problem. So to begin, I need to know Kb. So Kw for an acid con base pair is equal to Ka times Kb. That means that if I do Kw divided by Ka, I'll get Kb. So I plug in my values. Kw is going to be 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th. Ka is going to be 1.78 times 10 to the negative 4th. We plug those values in. We get 5.62 times 10 to the negative 11th is our Kb. So now let's actually write the chemical equation for Kb. We have HCOO minus plus water, because we're always reacting with water on the left side when we've got a weak acid or weak base by itself, or a strong acid or strong base by itself as well. Don't erase my line. So since it's acting as a base, remember our bases are the ones that gain hydrogens. It's going to pull hydrogen away from the water, and it's going to reform the original acid. And when it does that, since it's pulling a hydrogen away, water becomes OH minus. It lost a hydrogen. So since we only have one of these molecules present, we've got to do an ice table. Now, I need to know the concentration of the HCO minus, but I don't know it yet. So I'm going to solve that to the side. So we know the moles, but we can't just plug moles in. So we've got 0 0.003 moles. But as a reminder, this is an ice table. That means we need concentrations and molarity because it's ice. It's only the BAA that uses moles. So we have 0 0.003. We're going to divide it by the volume. The equivalence point occurred at 30 milliliters, and you started with 15 milliliters. That means the total volume right now is 45 milliliters, or 0 0.045 liters. We plug those values in, and we're going to get that it's a 0 0.0667 molar concentration. I plug this value in here, 0 0.0667. Water we're not worried about. This we're starting at 0 and approximately 0. The change is we're going to lose some of the reactants. We're going to gain some of the products. Now again, we're going to assume x is small. And this is a very good assumption in this case because Kb is 5.62 times 10 to the negative 11th. Very, very few products are going to form. x is going to be really tiny. We'll have x and x. So now we set this up. Our Kb is equal to our products, our HCOOH times our OH minus divided by our reactants, HCOO minus. We plug our values in. The top ones are both x, so we get x squared. We're assuming x is small, so the denominator is just going to be 0 0.0667. And that's equal to 5.62 times 10 to the negative 11th. Multiply both sides by 0 0.0667. You'll get x squared equals 3.75 times 10 to the negative 12th square root both sides, you get x is equal to 1.94 times 10 to the negative sixth. And that's our OH minus. <coughs> so like we said, x is real tiny. So now let's try to solve this problem. I'm going to try to keep it all on the same slide. So now we can find the POH is equal to the negative log of 1.94 times 10 to the negative six. We'll have our POH equals, what was that, 5.71, which means our pH is going to be 14 minus 5.71, which will give us 8.29. And that's our pH. And it is slightly basic, which makes sense because we have a conjugate base present. It's weakly basic. So that's us through part D. It's doable. It takes a little more work. But otherwise, it's actually really similar to the initial parts of the weak acid equation here. It's just you have a base instead. You have to do a little extra work to calculate the molarity. So in your weak acid strong base titration, this is always how we're going to solve it at the equivalence point. The equivalence point means you're only going to have one compound present. So this, since it's a weak acid titration, you only have a weak base left because you got rid of all the acid. If it had been a weak base titration, you'd have gotten rid of all the base and formed an acid. So you would have to do the reverse. You'd have to find the Ka for it. Let's look at the last question about adding some extra sodium hydroxide. Note, this part is going to be solved the same as the strong case, and that's because you have excess base present. But let's look at how that works out and make sure, yes, that is indeed what happens. So we've got our formic acid. It's going to react with sodium hydroxide. 
And again, it's going to form some water because we're adding acids and bases together. It's also going to form our HCOO minus and our Na plus, which are both aqueous. And this one over here is aqueous, and this one over here is aqueous. So our starting amounts are we still have 0 0.003 to start with, and none of the others. And we're not doing water anywhere. So our addition, though, now we're adding 0 0.004 moles. We're not adding anything of the others, which means we're going to run out of acid first, not base. So we're going to use up 0 0.003. 0 0.003. We're going to gain 0 0.003 over here and over here which means our after addition, we're not gonna have any acid left. We're gonna have a little bit of base left. We're gonna have a little bit of this acid and a little bit of this, or sorry, a little bit of this conjugate base and a little bit of the sodium. Now, first you might look at this and go, oh, there's a conjugate base and a strong base. Do those both matter? No, you have excess strong base. The excess strong base is gonna control the pH so well that it doesn't matter that you have a weak base present as well. Similarly, if you had a strong acid present and a little bit of weak acid, the strong acid is going to determine everything. At least for the purpose of problems we work on, we're not going to work with a concentrated enough weak acid that it would matter much at all. The NaOH is going to completely dominate and control everything. So we have a strong base, so we look at the strong base to find our pH. So we need to know the concentration of the NaOH. And we have 0 0.001 moles of it. And then we've got a volume 0 0.055 liters. That's because we added 40 to 15, giving us 55. And that'll be 0 0.0182 molar. And then for the pOH of that is going to be the negative log of 0 0.0182 molar. That'll give us a pO which is equal to 1.74. So our pH is going to be 14 minus our pOH, which is 1.74. We have 12.26, the exact same answer we got in the strong titration case with the same concentrations. So that gets us through the weak acid, strong base titration. I want to finish up with a bit about what a titration curve will look here, and specifically how it will look a tiny bit different than the strong case. So this is going to be weak acid adding a strong base. No, we're not going to do any problems where the thing you're adding isn't strong because it, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense for what to do, at least for the types of questions we're asking. There's no reason to have them both be weak. So we're only going to look with one of them being weak at most. So remember, the x-axis is volume, and our y-axis is going to be pH. And I'm going to mark 7 again, but we're not going to occur exactly at 7. So because it's an acid, we're going to start low. And it's going to start going up a bit more in the beginning. <coughs> it's not going to start off flat. It's going to flatten off some. This is where it's working like a buffer. And then it's going to start to come up, and then it's still going to have this really sharp peak. Not quite that sharp. Okay, I'm going to redraw that line because I made it a little too sharp. And there we go. It's still pretty sharp, just not quite as sharp. And what you'll notice is that the middle is going to occur above 7. It's going to be slightly basic. And that's because, like we did in our problem, when you've got all of it neutralized, you have a weak base because all of the weak acid turned into the base. So now you've got your weak conjugate base, pH is slightly above 7. Now if you look at the other case, weak bat, so the weak base case, and that really should be a W, not a V, W. Here we'll again mark 7. We're starting where it's basic, and it's going to go some more, and then it's going to be kind of flat, and then it's going to change some more, and then it's going to have a pretty big spike. And here, because it's a weak base, the middle is going to occur below 7 because it's going to be a weak conjugate acid at the equivalence point. So that's how these curves look different compared to the strong cases, is that the beginning is going to look a little different because there's going to be some more change at the beginning. And the equivalence point is going to occur at a different pH. The weak acid case will be basic at the equivalence point. The weak base case will be acidic at the equivalence point. And that finishes up on our material on titration. Yes, yes it does. Just making sure.